Ati Allah, Ati Rasulullah, Amri Minkum. I know it was a reminder for myself and Abu Qurayji Sadaee for miskeen, azal, and jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah gave us a life in which to see these night and to worship within them and to have the faith of Divinely Presence and the Kingdom of the Divinely Presence, the faith of Islam and the way of submission. And alhamdulillah that Allah granted us to be from awliya Allah's followers and Naqshbandiya followers. It's immense ni'mat that when Allah loves a servant and wants to guide them, grants them Divinely gifts and the gifts of the heavens are the gifts in which are the paths that lead to the door of Allah the Divinely door, the Divinely Presence. So those are the gifts of Allah not the dunya. That many people think that if Allah give you dunya that this is Allah's favour. But Allah's favour is to give the path that leads to His Divinely Kingdom. And that that path is always a reminder for us, is a path of struggle and continuous testing and continuous difficulty. And when we take that path and we, we look and analyze ourselves that alhamdulillah I'm on a path. Allah guided me to shaykhs and the tariqah, their knowledge not the same as others. So many comments when you read the comments and I, I would advise people to go back and read the YouTube comments and, and see what the audience of people that are coming and what they're understanding, reading, making comments so that we understand what, what type of ni'mat and blessing Allah is bestowing upon ourselves. We are the first to read and be thankful and astonished because the teaching is not mine, I don't try to claim any credibility for it, I'm merely a flute and the one whom plays through me I'm also astonished because I wonder like, well, who said that? That's why many times I need feedback from people and the people, kids when I talk to my kids and how was it, what was that because I'm not present with that talk thinking of every word and, and reading a, a dialogue but it's a flute that's playing and I have to go back and listen to it to myself and, and the knowledges and the realities that they inspire. Any badness is definitely from myself or any incorrectness from myself. And any goodness is from them and what they convey of realities. And some people say, well I never heard this in any mosque. Yeah the poor imams they are not of that reality, it's not for them to speak of this. It's not in their training, it's not in their curriculum and it's not the path that they were, were sort of either inspired to take or, or to take, that these are a heavenly path. These are the above even the PhDs of understandings within Islam and the haqqaiqs and what we call the Muhammadan reality, Habirat al-Muhammadiyyah, the highest of realities because the highest of realities is what Allah loves when He wants to give His servant, He gives them what He loves. He doesn't give them Himself because this is not an adab where Allah want to teach you about Himself, Allah want to teach you about what He loves. So like when you go to someone's house they want to teach you about what they love and they talk about their kids because the, the attraction of love is, I want you to love what I love. Allah's love is this immense reality called creation. Its reality is also called Muhammadun Rasulullah that everything coming from that beatific garden, everything emanating from that immense garden. So when Allah loves the serpent, He brings them by their hand and says, look to this garden that I'm a hidden treasure and wanting to be known. Look at the beatific garden, you see the qualities and the characteristics that the shaykhs are talking to you about of the Muhammadan characteristic, the Muhammadan light, the Muhammadan realities. All of those are being taught because Allah wants to be known and wants to be known by the best. That's why when whatever you have to give, you give the best in Allah's way. 
we don't give the worst of what we have and say, okay, I didn't need it, I'm giving it. But the best of what I have is for Allah and Allah is teaching that the best of what I have is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad of what I put my love and what is of a perfected nature because I don't want you to think of anything of a lesser perfection. And that's why the Muhammadan haqqaiqs are, 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 are everything to reach to. So those are from the people whom Allah has guided to that, that the, somebody who's just the imam at a masjid that's not what he studied, that's not what his, his heart had intended to and maybe Allah may guide somebody at a later point to ascend and to go deeper into the deen and that to leave only the external understanding and have a desire because many external ulama, scholars of Islam they had a desire and a yearning that the external is just not satisfying anymore and they wanted and had a yearning for the internal knowledge and that was important that they yearned for internal knowledge and Allah then said, if that's what you want we'll guide you. And then they're inspired and they come across channels and they come across the teachings in which how to connect their heart and reach to these realities. So of course then they're not going to speak about the light, if they're not trained in the light, they're not going to speak about other beings and if they're not trained in the beings and I have even other external scholars are making comments that oh people talk too much about things that other people don't know about and but don't worry about guidance. When Allah wants a shaykh to guide he knows exactly how to talk and how to deal and exactly how He's enticing people to come towards that way. Not for everybody but it's for those whom have had experiences they need to hear these things. Because those experiences are like what we said that Allah causes a condition and then has a door. Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Musabibul Asbah, Ya Mufatiha Abwaab, Ya Muqalibul Qulubi wa Nafsah. That I cause the condition and then I provide an opening, a door. So if the condition hasn't come to you, well you're not interested in this door because you're very happy right where you are. You go for Jummah, he talks the same thing for 35 years, then you go out and get something to eat and go home. And you're happy with the, is it the blue pill? The, the matrix pill where you don't want to know. That's why he asked him in the matrix, would you take this pill? If you take this pill we're going to open realities for you and this world will never look the same to you again. Now not that many people want that. They say, no, no I'm happy and I'm content in the ignorance and I want this world to look beautiful <laughs> and I want it to be what I wanted it to be that I'm going to work, I'm going to work at that place for 30 years and I'm going to buy life insurance and I'm going to live here and die there and I have it all planned out and that's they're content with that and their Islam is they go Jummah and that's it. But there are others whom Allah has put into their heart a condition and they're not content with that. And they see the matrix, they see something is, is, is not what it is and they want to understand an inner working, they want to understand an inner reality, they want to understand a world of light, they want to understand what is their eternal position, what were they created for, what were they here to achieve. And even more so now on this earth they're asking that, what's happening on this earth? Why are they saying so many things and, and they don't make sense? So those whom Allah put within that condition then they're attracted to these stations and these channels. And it's not bound by religion. We said before in the last days we speak a language that is of a great equalizer. We have a common denominator in how we speak. So that any religion, no religion, any understanding, some understanding if they have within their heart that they want to understand about that energy and that light they will find that calling and move towards that direction. So this is a very specific type of teaching for a very specific time.
and that's the, the immensity of its blessing, that's the immensity of, of its reality. That when we go back through all the comments and read the comments that the people are saying that, I never heard about these things on my Jumma, I never heard this from the Imam, no you're not going to hear that from them. It's not their position to talk on subjects they are not familiar with and they have very little understanding in it. So it's only for those whom Allah has guided to speak about it. And the most powerful speech are from those whom their energy and their reality is within that, that for them it's a truth, for them it's a witnessing, they have witnessed that understanding. When they witness it and it comes as a truth through their heart and soul, they speak from their heart and their soul. They don't speak from academia and from knowledge of the head or something that they read and memorized. There's no book, there's no papers and it's only a dialogue from their heart. That Allah gave them a situation, gave them an opening and a door in which they went through as a result of their knowledges, their vision of truth and it became a haqq and a truth within their heart and then Allah inspires that heart in that direction and then begins to give more and more and more understandings on that subject and on that matter. So we pray in these holy nights that these are the, the nights that are opening up of immense power. Rajab the seventh lunar month is a month from the Divinely Presence which God describes by the Holy Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad I'm going to give without any angel or any prophet knowing, I'm going to give without any cause because this world cause and effect means I can open anything and bestow anything. And this is the month in which many amazing and outstanding things happen. When you say ajeeb that there are very astonishing, astonishing things that happen in the month of Rajab. And then opening into the holy month of Shabban in which is the month of Sayyidina Muhammad to give a special honour and a special gift for what Allah gave in Rajab, Prophet wants to give and sweeten that gift and make it more beatific upon the soul of that servant by drawing them nearer to his, his Divinely soul and dressing and blessing it. And then as a general gift for the entire ummah is the dress of Ramadan in which Allah want to perfect that treasure and bring it out as a result of that treasure and nobody being able to achieve that treasure by actions. Allah says, you can only achieve it by a state of fasting in which you abstain and that abstinence for the sake of the Divinely Presence will allow us to achieve immense realities that we could not have achieved by actions and, and any type of action that we could have applied and put upon ourselves through our praying and, and through any other giving. This is purely a gift that Allah bestows as a result of fasting. So this is actually the month in which the greatest gifts are dressed by Allah asking us, don't do anything, abstain. Means fast with your ears, your eyes, your breath, your hands, your, your, your touch and with the highest is the mouth as a result of Ramadan then dressing and blessing. And so immense openings, inshaAllah Allah dress us and bless us with these openings and grant us from the realities of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah and the heart of a Siddiq al-Mutlaq our beloved grandfather Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and the perfected character that is pure in his actions and in his character. His words and his actions are the purity so that they act and they speak correctly. We live in a world now where many may speak a word of interest to people but their actions and their characters are not true. And that's the danger that they speak something but their character is, is of a backbiting, horrific, angry, uh, gossip spreading type of character. But they may speak and appear to be something but their character warrants that they're not of that nature. 
Naqshbandi al Aliyah and Siddiqiyah character from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq is that the character has to be truthful, the actions are of a truthful nature. As a result when they speak everything is empowered and is encased in that ocean of perfection. If the character is horrific and lying and gossiping and backbiting and every type of badness then we said before then it's just the glass that's poisonous and anybody who drinks from that becomes poisoned by the glass. Regardless of the purity of the water that's within it, if the glass is poisonous you're already dead. Means that the character of people we hang out with if they're of a ruinous nature or they become more angered in the last days where everybody becomes very angered in the last days. It's what we describe would be happening. They're taking things, they're being injected with things, they're having stress from work, from TV, from everything around them and as a result of their imperfection and really never taking their course in the tariqah, never really meditating and connecting with the shaykhs, maybe even thinking they are the shaykh. Whatever it is that stopped them from attaining that understanding they begin to become more angered and more angry and more angry until the rage of that character fills the streets of you know north, south, east and west. And we see that that's coming on the horizon that the bad character begin to overtake people and they begin to sort of indulge in their bad character and that's why the hadith in the last days or the teaching of awliya that the awliya would be all hidden. That awliya and pious people would be hidden on the earth and we talked many years ago that they're not hidden but they're hidden in plain sight. That the character of people becomes so bad, so angry, so jealous and such bad characteristics they no longer see anything or anyone as pious because the, the pious people it escapes their eyes to see them. They backbite them, attack them, come against them and that becomes then the sign of the last days in which people's bad character overtakes them, blinds their eyes, blinds their ears. And as a result shaitan overtakes their mouth and begin to use it against these holy people and hence people think that they are taken from the earth or they're hidden in the last days. We pray that Allah address us from the blessings of this immense night and weekend and that we be under the nazar of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as salam and that He dress us and bless us with the perfected character and the immense love and ishq and the ability to serve Sayyidina Muhammad Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiri Surat al-Fatiha